Welcome back, everybody. This one is in the books, and the Falcons defeat Fisher. They shut out the Bunnies on the uh, Fisher homecoming game, 56 to nothing, the final score. And our uh, uh, sideline side 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 reporter. Side yeah, side 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 okay, guys, up. I'm with Coach Mike Allen here. And, uh, Coach, heck of a game. I had a lot of people this week with me about this game, and I said, hey, you know, Fisher's good, as you well know, coming in, too. But uh, I wasn't too concerned. Uh, what would you think coming in? What would you think after the game? You know, uh, coming in, two teams 4-0, their homecoming, anything could happen, uh, Steve. And our kids uh, took a business-like approach this week. They didn't get caught up in all the hype. Uh, they, they just kind of came out and practiced, worked on what they need to work on. And we came out here and, and stayed focused. Uh, we didn't have, you know, the turnovers. We limited our turnovers. And our defense played outstanding and put our offense, you know, defense had two scores, I believe, or one, one score and then a block punt. Um, so, you know, very happy with how we played. And, and, you know, Fisher's a good ball team. They, you know, they're 4-1 four, four and one now, but, they, you know, they, they had some quality wins. They're going to do well in the rest of the conference. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we were talking at halftime up there when I was in the booth uh, giving stats. And, you know, the guys asked me about, uh, you know, you guys as coaches on the sideline because I'm down here seeing everything going on. And, and like I told them and told everybody on the air that you guys take everything seriously, but you also have fun doing it. And the kids see that and they feed off that, and I think it just makes the program better. It does. We made a conscious effort about four or five years ago to have fun. And at practice and games, uh, you know, hey, let's focus on having fun, let the kids have fun. When it's time to get busy, they get busy. They have a work ethic, uh, blue collar, you know, type, and they just come take care of their job and their business and, and, and let things happen. I saw uh, Joe Allen get a carry tonight and yeah. touchdown. That's good for him. And so is that a, a big jumbo package that we, we're going to see in the future? It is, but I tell you what, Fisher did a very nice job uh, attacking us on that. You know, in practice, we looked really, really good with it and, and came out, and, and Fisher did a nice job. We ran it, I think, three or four times, and, and it wasn't for big gains. They stopped us where they needed to, and, uh, you know, Joe had a one-yard run. We gave it to him, and, and he took it in, but it, it was close. It was real close. Hey, Steve. Uh, so what's on the horizon here? What's, what's next, the next opponent, and uh, what do we got to look forward to here coming up? We have a very good Tri-Valley team coming into our homecoming next week, and we, we told our guys, hey, yeah, you know, the Fisher beat Tri-Valley, you know, a couple weeks ago, but Tri-Valley has a heck of a coaching staff. They're going to get better every week, correct their mistakes. You know, they fumbled, I think, six times against Fisher in that rain that night. So, uh, if, you know, Tri-Valley, four-point stance, offensive line, they get down and they get after it. So we're going to have to match their intensity uh, and, and limit our turnovers. Okay, Coach, we'll go enjoy this one, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Okay, Steve okay, guys, I'll Yeah, you want to keep it right there? Here, All right. You can give me a moment to grab my stats. Sure. Steve Sires, our sideline reporter slash Hold on, uh, Coach Osberger. Hey, Coach. Okay. Come on over, man. Trying to uh, find a Falcon defensive coach on coordinator, here. Defensive Chad coordinator Osberger. Coach Augsburger's coming on. Wasn't sure if they got your... <laughs> wasn't sure if they got a hold of you or not, but uh, we certainly want to give you a little bit of credit here, too. you got the kids playing awesome defense. They've been playing awesome all year long. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your scheme and, and some of, a little bit about some of the kids and what they do for you. Well, our kids are just great. They're great athletes, and they're film junkies, and they're, they're very coachable, so it's pretty easy to coordinate a defense when you got a bunch of kids like that. So we're just trying to, you know, scheme it out, trying to, you know, take a, find out what, the offense wants to do and take it away and make them do things they don't want to do so yeah and it's it's to have games like this like we've had the last couple of years you're getting a lot of experience so both offensively and defensively you guys feed those younger kids some plays and and uh they've all responded they play well you a lot of times you you can't tell that you got some subs in there so with how good the defense is playing our younger guys too those, those guys that you know don't aren't on that first team you know, they listen during the week, and they understand. I mean, they they take pride, and you know, they want to keep that goose egg as much as the uh, the varsity does. And you know, they we we can sub those guys in without having any real, you know, without having to change our scheme up, which is a nice thing. We can do the same calls, we can run the same coverages because they you know they listen, and then when it's their turn, they get a chance to you know show what they can do. And they've they're really they've really stepped up this year as well. Yeah, and and you guys came out. I I know in the first game. Uh, I think Faxon came out with something a little bit that you weren't playing it on. Um, they moved the ball a little bit early, but boy, you guys adjusted well, and, and you guys as a coaching staff do great, a great job with that. But the kids picked that up quickly too, so tell us a little bit about how they do that. Well, I mean, we, our scheme is set up so that they, they, they understand the rules. No, the offense can't really do anything other than put 
two to three receivers on one side or four receivers, and they know they you know in terms of alignment, they know you know, if if they have so many receivers to this side, they align this way. If there's only one, you know the safeties know how to adjust, and so there's really nothing. You know, even if we don't don't have a certain type of offense scouted correctly or accurately, they know how to adjust because in the end, there's only so many ways they can line up. And so, even with you know, and the, what we're really good at is picking up ineligible guys when they line, run unbalanced sets and they cover, you know, the cover inside receivers. They're good. They realize that guy can't go out for a pass, so we know we don't have to cover him. We'll come up and, you know, play, you know, run leverage out of it. And or when they pick up, you know, the backside tackle is wearing 17 or something like that they realize that kid's eligible i mean it's they're so good at picking that stuff up that you know teams really can't run much at us they're not prepared for it so and ultimately it's still all football right football's football yeah, exactly. and, and our kids they just fly to the football and they make plays obviously tonight you saw the defense was all over the field so yep. well thanks a lot coach for talking to us and uh, keep up the good work all right thank you very much appreciate it <laughs> okay guys now to the stats here so let's see <laughs> Oh man, bending over is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for our GCMS Falcons, we had uh, 14 first downs, rushing Nathan.